lots of other life forms in there. There's a translator. But that's okay. We'll get maggots about yay big from a thing called the soldier fly. That's fine. They all are breaking down your uh, vegetable matter. And uh, we've got some eggshells in there. All our eggshells go in. Some people are very conscientious and they break their eggshells down by putting them in a blender. I'm not that fussy. My worms aren't that fussy either. But it, because it's calcium carbonate, it breaks down the acidity in the soil. And uh, it's also, the sticks, the little bits, they allow oxygen through for your worms. Gavin, what, yes. uh, in the instructions on the worm farm that I bought yesterday, the day before, it said to, to start it off because the worms, you know, um, they're novices, that they're you can actually process some of the food, you know, yeah. to mulch it up, to just get them started. So Initially, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. easier for them to break down. So start, everybody that hurt? works out, yeah, yeah. Do you need to put sweets in? Pardon? Do you need to put sweets in? No, I don't. You need to? Put sweets in? No. no. You put sweets in? No, no, no. I, I'm just saying that everything that goes into my worm farm, uh, you know, I don't worry terribly much. The, uh, <laughs> now this worm farm, is, uh, that's, that's worm food juice. I'm going to think of marketing it for our course. <laughs> it, this is, I took this from my daughter's She's got a realm worm farm, which is a rectangular box system, the same as this, different layers. The bottom one collects all the juice which is produced by the worms and also, when, in our case, we've got a container which we call our grilch bin next in the kitchen. It's just an ordinary saucepan without a handle. <laughs> all these scraps from our food goes into that, eggshells goes into that, and sometimes the water that we use to wash our hands on the vegetable goes in too. The whole idea being that it adds moisture to your worm farm and your worms will stay wet. Not too much water because they will drown. They're just like us. They need food, water and oxygen. This stuff which collects in the bottom is very concentrated fertilizer. If you put this on your plant straight, it will burn your plants and kill them. So you always have to dilute your worm poo juice. 10 to 1 is usually okay. It's just a general fertilizer. Now in this system, the worm poo juice is going straight into the bottom, into the water in the bottom, which is about yay deep and it's being pumped, solar power coming from the roof to a little pump which draws the water from down there, up there, into this section up here. So it's a little hydroponic system. Self-supporting, all the nutrients are coming from there and they're coming from there and going back into the system. So it's a circular system. Okay, now there are five types of worm that are composting worm. This one is a red worm, a red wriggler. You can get tigers. They are just happen to have a striped pattern on them. There's one thing called an African blue. But I don't know what's happened to my, uh, my tigers. These are light sensitive. They don't have any eyes. But they'll get out of the, out of the sunlight immediately especially their heads are very sensitive to light. Now a worm is a very simple structure, it's two tubes, one inside the other. The outside is the epidermis, the inside is the gut. And in between is a layer of uh, muscles, nerves and brain. The brain is very long. They've been around for squillions of years and uh, the gentleman that is one of the experts in worms is Charles Darwin. He spent 38, 39 years studying worms. <coughs> so these are specifically for compost. Your ordinary garden worm will increase in its numbers as you add your nutrients to your soil. They will stay separate, they will stay in the ground. 
today. Uh, Australia has one of the longest earthworms, it's the Gippsland worm, which grows up to 12 feet. It's, uh, it weighs about a pound and a half. I don't know what that is in here. Anyway, 